In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. A special welcome on video to all of our viewers from the St. Michael's College community and beyond. We celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, praying for our world, our nation, and for our local communities. And as we're nourished by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which gives us strength and courage, we first pause, acknowledge our sins, and we ask our Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave us yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I has chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Elab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there's still the youngest who is tending the sheep. 
Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. I shall dwell in the Lord's house. The Lord is my shepherd. Nothing shall I want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you. 
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam which means see. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin. And are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, we are in no doubt in some unprecedented times as a country, and as a world. We all have our separate ways of dealing with the bombardment of warnings and media stories covering the COVID-19 outbreak. It is now more than ever that we have to rely on our faith and hope in God and in his, and to have faith in his only Son, Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for Easter, to acknowledge one's sins, to spend more time in prayer, and to increase our activities in helping others and doing good works. But let's face it, this Lent is very different. Our many concerns and priorities in life just a few weeks ago have probably changed. The world is different than it was just a few weeks ago, and our lives are certainly different as well. I am convinced that the word of God for this fourth Sunday of Lent has something to say to us and our world in this time of crisis. One of the most well-known psalms we hear today and prayed in various settings, 
is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. We are giving images of verdant pastures, of being refreshed besides restful waters. We are invited to the table which the Lord spreads before us, of being anointed with oil and having a cup which overflows. These words of the psalmist paint a beautiful and safe picture for all of us, which we're invited to enter in times like these. Let us not forget the most critical point the psalmist make, which is the key message for us today. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and staff that gives me courage. We are in a dark valley today, and we need to remember that the Lord is at our side to give us courage to see us through this most difficult time. St. Paul writes about the differences of being a people of light and a people of darkness. Let us strive to be the people of light and hope we're called to be. Let us remember that the Jesus who healed the blind man is indeed with us today. The presence of God is indeed with us in the form of courageous health care workers and those first responders who risk their lives for their brothers and sisters. We cannot lose hope, but must strive to be a people of light, recognizing God's presence in the midst of these disturbing times. The message for us today is not to be fearful, to have courage, and to be the people of light we're called to be. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who healed the man born blind and who gifted us with eternal life. May the Eucharist we celebrate strengthen our hope and give us courage to be the people of light during these challenging times. Amen. We will profess our faith by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Recognizing that we need God's help in a radical way this day, we bring these, our prayers, to our loving God. Let us pray in this time of crisis that we will have faith and courage so we may be the people of light we are called to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that through our spiritual devotions and prayers, we may experience a deep conversion of heart and grow stronger in our covenant with God, who is the source of all love and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the vocations to the Society of St. Edmund and our respective dioceses, that women and men will answer the call of God to serve in our many ministries of our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for healing and peace in our world and for those working on a vaccine for the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all our beloved sick, that God will restore them to full and active health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for all those who have died, our relatives, friends, alumni, and benefactors, that they may rest in peace with God in the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us add our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, in these days of challenge and difficulty, we have many prayers. We ask you, Lord, to hear all of them, particularly the prayers of the St. Michael's College communities. Grant them if they are in accord with your will. And we ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery and ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures 
of heaven and earth. Sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously Make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Michael, Edmund, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Christopher our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all of our departed sisters and brothers, particularly those of the St. Michael's College community, 
and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us acknowledge one another's presence by some sign of peace. On you stay, quit all is peccata mundi, miserere on you stay, quit all is peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, quit all is peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak.
in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand before Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Awake from darkness.